the wrong way and the right way to exercise a military neck or a cervical kyphosis. That's the topic of this video. One of the most common alignment problem findings that I see on patients is either a straight neck, which is a loss of cervical lordosis, or a kyphotic neck, which is a cervical kyphosis, which is a reversal of the cervical lordosis or reversal of the neck curve. Now, these are identified by x-rays and they require specific exercises. So in this video, I'm going to go over the wrong way to exercise the military neck and then also the right way based on the x-ray analysis. So stay tuned right to the end because not only am I gonna show you those exercises, I'm also gonna show you what a military neck looks like on an x-ray and as well what a cervical kyphosis looks like on an x-ray and the reason why there's a wrong way to do it based on what it looks like on an x-ray. Hi, I'm Dr. Walter Slubra. I'm a corrective care chiropractor in Vaughan, Ontario, Canada. Welcome to my channel. What this channel is about is giving you tips and strategies on how to stabilize and strengthen your back and spine. Like this, you can bend, move, and lift normally without pain and limitation. And what that means for you is getting back to a normal life. So if you want these tips and strategies, be sure you subscribe right now by clicking on that subscribe button below, that red button below. Also tap on the notification bell and turn on the notification settings on your mobile devices. Like this, you don't miss out on my weekly video updates. And if you just subscribe right now, I wanna thank you and comment below, let me know you subscribed and I'll reply back with a personal thank you reply. To understand the wrong way and also the right way to exercise a military neck or a cervical kyphosis, you need to understand what a normal neck looks like first. So a normal alignment of the cervical spine from the side view is the shape of a circle. It approximates the shape of a circle. And this has been validated through research with um, very specialized biomechanical research models, mathematical models. Uh, we know what the normal alignment is. We know what the averages are in the population. It should be at least circular in shape. That's what a normal alignment is and that's what a healthy neck looks like. And this is what a cervical military neck looks like. That's when the neck is completely straight. So you'll see that it's completely lost its alignment. And uh, there is a right way to exercise this. There's also a wrong way. I'll show you both of these um, later on in the video. And as well, you can see here the x-ray of what a military neck looks like. So look at the spinal model plus the x-ray and you see it looks very, very similar. Now, what does the kyphosis look like? Well, kyphosis is a complete reversal of the actual cervical curve. So if this is normal, so the person's facing that way, right? Kyphosis would be a complete reversal something like that. So it's reversing in the opposite direction. That's why it's called the kyphosis. It's bending forward, which is completely abnormal for the neck. And that's what it looks like on an x-ray right over here. You can actually match the two and see what it looks like. Again, there's a wrong way to exercise this, and then there's also a right way, which I'll show you in the video. So one of the most commonly prescribed exercises that people get for their neck is a chin tuck. And I talked about a chin tuck exercise, um, when people should not do a chin tuck exercise in another video, so I'll put that in the description below. So the reason why a chin tuck is prescribed is to improve that forward head position. That's kind of the basic reason why. So if, someone had, if someone's head is forward like this, they're prescribed a chin tuck to bring it back into a better position and strengthen those muscles. However, what if someone has a straight military neck or a kyphosis? Well, a chin tuck is not appropriate in that situation because what you're doing is you're now pulling back that entire reverse neck if it's a kyphosis or pulling back that entire military neck if it's a straight neck, which is completely wrong biomechanically, structurally as well, and also functionally. So you do not want to do a chin tuck. A chin tuck is the wrong exercise to do with a military neck and with a kyphosis neck. So make sure you avoid that. The only way to know that is if you had an actual x-ray of your spine, of your cervical spine. That's the only way to know if you're gonna get this exercise right or wrong. So the wrong thing to do is a chin tuck for a cervical kyphosis or a military neck. And I wanna emphasize it's a standard chin tuck, the one that's commonly prescribed, which is doing this in space, okay? Now, let's get into the right way to exercise this. So here's three awesome exercises to exercise a military neck and also a cervical kyphosis. What's required is a fulcrum point. You need to create a fulcrum point on that mid part of the neck or wherever that loss of curve is, which is identified on an x-ray. Once you create a fulcrum point, it creates kind of a three point bending. I'll show you all this, what it means. Like I know it's a bit complicated when I describe it, but it creates a three point bending and that allows now 
the induction of the lordosis as the head is pulled back. So what does it look like on a spinal model? So let's say someone has a milita military neck or a kyphosis. We need to bend the spine over a spot here. That's a fulcrum. So if I get someone to hold their neck against something, as they're pulling their head back, that's going to create a fulcrum point and create an actual bending into the lordosis position, which is normal. Okay, now, what does that look like on a person? Okay, so imagine someone has a military neck. I'll put the x-ray right up here, or even a kyphosis. We give them these Stroop exercises, or these pro-lordotic neck exercisers, and their tension-type band, or a, a elastic band, a tubing with handles, we can stretch it out, look up, so I'm creating a fulcrum point now, so I'm inducing, I'm inducing the lordosis, okay, the curve in the neck. So I'm actually correcting the military neck and also correcting the cervical kyphosis as I'm doing this. So stretch it out, get tension, pull forward, create a fulcrum point. Now I could pull the head back, kind of a modified chin tuck against a fulcrum point. And I can hold it there for 10 seconds and repeat, or I can do repetitions, okay? It actually feels very, very good, right? So that's one of the exercises we give for a neck that is a military neck, straight neck, or a neck that's a kyphosis reversal at that cervical lordosis. Now a variation, if you don't have one of these, a uh, variation is using an elastic tubing, like that, okay? So you can imagine, you put it over here, and you pull into the tubing, create a fulcrum point, okay? Hope you can picture that. If that's a little bit too hard on your neck, then what you do is grab a towel, you may have seen the towel exercises in my other video or in other videos on YouTube, but I put a towel around that stretchy band just like that, create a, a nice spongy feeling. Same idea, okay? Same idea, all right? Now, after I show you the next exercise, I do need to give you a word of caution because there are contraindications to doing these exercises that you need to be um, aware of. And of course, your chiropractor or whoever, doctor, therapist is prescribing these exercises need to be aware of as well. And we base these contraindications on the x-ray analysis. So I'll get into those after I show you that third exercise. Now, this third exercise is a really awesome exercise to exercise a military neck or cervical kyphosis. I learned it from another corrective care CVP chiropractor named Dr. Chris Bedorchuk. It's called the FLIP exercise, F-L-I-P, which stands for Fedorchuk lordosis inducing protocol and this is what it looks like okay now remember what the cervical military neck looks like and the cervical kyphosis looks like so we want to get into a position where we're going to induce a lordosis from that starting position so we do it's a four-step movement you need to jut the chin forward look up to the ceiling tilt the skull back pull everything back you'll see it's inducing lordosis and then tilt the chin down just a little bit I'll do it again. Jut the chin forward, look up, pull everything back, and then tilt down just a bit. You'll see if I put my fingers here that I can create a fulcrum point as I'm doing that. So forward, look up, pull back, chin down. So I created a lordosis in there, inducing a lordosis. I'll show you again. Chin forward, look up, pull back, chin down, okay? One more time, chin forward, look up, pull back, chin down. So that's called the flip exercise, which is a lordosis inducing exercise, super amazing. Uh, I've seen x-ray pictures where people are in a kyphosis or a, a military style neck, and um, they, they get into a flip exercise position, and you see a nicely induced lordosis in that position. So we know that it's a very effective exercise. Now you have three great techniques to correctly exercise a military neck and a cervical kyphosis. So when should you not do these exercises? What are the contraindications? Well, we base this on x-ray analysis, of course, and a, and a patient's clinical history. So some findings like an anterior list thesis, where there's a slippage forward of one of the vertebra, you can't do this exercise at that level because that fulcrum point is gonna keep pulling that vertebra forward. If someone has a retrolithesis, they may, that's a backward slipping vertebra, they may be able to do this. If it's tolerable, that's more indicated, uh, but not for an anterior listhesis. 
if there's an um, aggravated disc bulge injury or an aggravated herniated disc where it's inflamed and it's a pain generator at that moment or possibly causing um, symptoms, ridiculous symptoms into the fingers, may not be able to do that, that exercise, okay? It needs to be got under a um, corrective care chiropractor or some kind of doctor or therapist that knows what they're doing with this exercise. If there's, of course, a fracture or dislocation in those spinal joints, um, those are situations where you don't do this exercise. And if there's organic um, health conditions like uh, tumors, inflammation, you know, these uh, very serious um, organic pathologies, then of course you don't wanna do that exercise either. So we need to rule out the contraindications for this exercise and those are some of the reasons when not to do these lordosis inducing exercises now if you have any questions make sure you leave them in the comments below and uh, if you need any clarification leave them in the comments below do let me know which exercise you like the best which one you think is working better for you also do it under the guidance of a chiropractor or a therapist or a doctor it's very very important and don't forget to subscribe if you're still new to my channel turn on that notification bell and I also have a very cool video for you that you can watch right here it's relates to this video what I showed you was these exercises that are motion movement exercises this video here will show you a tractioning exercise which is a great exercise for the cervical kyphosis or even a military neck so check it out right over here right now